Sup, dudes? Yo, I haven't improved my game with the ladies. So I'm treating you in for a Nintendo. He barks when all the girls are around with their Nintendogs, and BAM! Nintendogs are off the hook. I connect with other dog owners and train my own dog with my voice and touch. Honey, the girls are here. I know, Mom! Welcome to another exciting episode of Half Glass Gaming, a podcast for, by, about, and within gaming. Think about that. <laughs> I'm Julian. I got Mandy. Hey. I got Josh. That's me. And brrr, the Rev. That would be me. Yeah. We are back uh, for another action-packed um, time-traveling adventure. And we're counting down the days until Valentine's Day. Yeah. I uh, am absolutely loathes to acknowledge that there's a specific day where I'm supposed to show affection. Hmm. No, fuck you. I will show affection to my partners whenever and however I choose. Mm-hmm. I don't need a special day where I have to buy these socially acceptable gifts. Mm-hmm. You know, fuck your heart-shaped boxes of chocolates. I'm going to buy a regular-shaped box of chocolate, and I'm going to give it to my fiancé the day before Valentine's Day. Because fuck your that's, manufactured holidays. That's really bad planning, man. Get it the day after? It'll be 75% yeah. off? I mean... Actually, that's a good idea. I'll do it's, that instead. Yeah. It's really that's bad the, planning on yeah. your part. Yeah, no, that's, that's the one I'll do. Mm-hmm. I will say that I do have a lot of affection for the, the heart-shaped pizzas. I, I, I have a different tradition. I like to, every year on Valentine's day uh hold a massacre <laughs> um, <laughs> going going very traditional yeah. I, I can i can respect that yeah although i probably shouldn't have admitted to that um but you well know, they can't prove which massacre it was right uh, there have been many but the reason i don't like valentine's day really has nothing to do with the gift giving it really is like the socially social obligation bullshit mm-hmm. i like gift giving i gave you guys gifts Finally, you opened your Christmas presents. Yeah, yeah. It's been it's been a, a very long time since Christmas, and uh, the Rev has finally managed to gather and receive and yeah. wrap and then distribute the gifts for us. It, it was podcast members, but now all the gifts are here, and you guys have opened them, and yeah. you seem to enjoy them. The, the Reverend was was both very practical and very keeping in with the theme. Mm-hmm. Of uh, doing video game related items, mm-hmm. he got me a laundry hamper that's shaped like a old gray block Game Boy, and it's pretty fantastic. Yeah, it, it is. And then I got Julian a uh, beer pint glass that has Paper Mario on it. Yeah, I'm gonna hold it up to the microphone so you can really see it. Yeah, <laughs> you can really you take can really a look at that etching. Why did here. I actually just do that? <laughs> <laughs> And I got Mandy a Kirby hand towel because I, I know she likes Kirby. I love Kirby. Here what is if, a practical thing that is cute that she will like. What if Kirby were a Furby? That would be terrible, man. What? If? I worked at Toys R Us and they had a doorbuster deal where you spend $100 and got a free Furby. Back when you were a um, Pokemon... Yeah, back in the day. Were so you a... I was a Pokemon gym leader. Gym leader, yes. <laughs> the, the first ever Canadian gym leader, I believe she was. <laughs> yeah. And and the only one. They never went back. To yeah, right, no. They like, this... No, they only they again. only found the one Canadian worthy of me and a gym leader. <laughs> but also, I think let the record show that uh, none of us got the, the Reva gift. That's true. <laughs> Josh, Josh didn't even make sure to buy beer for today. I had to bring my own beer. <laughs> But yeah, so I'm glad you guys like your gift. That makes me happy. Yeah, although they're more of like a Valentine's Day gift than... No, no, they're not. They're nothing like a Valentine's Day yeah, gift. Yeah, I think that's... that's they, what... they were, well, they Mandy's were in... is pink. Yeah. They, were, they were in festive <laughs> My Christmas wrapping paper wrapping. was red. <laughs> it had Santa Claus on it. Well, you know. Mandy's had reindeer, mm-hmm. which I picked specifically for her because I know she likes animals. Mm, she does. Like Julian, leather jacket wearing Julian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I killed that animal myself. <laughs> he, he he hunted it down and snapped its neck with his teeth. Yeah, I tanned he, it. He doesn't even like how he looks in leather. He just mm-hmm. really oh, he wanted just... to wear a dead thing. Mm-hmm. You're right. While he's committing his traditional massacre on right. Valentine's Day, yeah. he wanted to wear dead skin. Yeah. Makes sense. People are like, oh, who did it? I think it's that Julian guy. Like, no, that guy never wears leather. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> he's a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Perfect alibi. Perfect alibi, indeed. You know, if I didn't know any better, I would say that this uh, gift giving was a way to maybe woo us 
Oh, no, some it, hearts over. It, it it absolutely is. I figure uh, I've done the fetch quests now, mm-hmm. so all I have to do is wear the amulet of Mara, mm-hmm. and any of you are marriage candidates. Mm-hmm. Although, to get to my heart, all you have to do is give me bread. Surprises me not at all. Well, and it should come as no surprise in the spirit of loving and sexing day. Uh, we're going to be talking about dating sims, so I think I'm going to call for a break uh, before we get into the action, before we start knocking them boots. And, uh, of Making course... the beast with two backs. Uh, that. Do- doing the horizontal polka. <laughs> doing the tush push. The tush push. <laughs> the tush push The naked boogie. mamba. Yeah, but like always, you know, of course I'd like to uh, first start off by thanking uh, 2XAA and Wheelie for the music to keep them boots knocking, cabins rocking, and uh, all those other things. Of course, you can find us on... Uh, Retrovolve, where you can also find a wealth of uh, gaming articles and uh, pictures. I think there are pictures as well. Um, We are on Half Glass Gaming, where you can find a detailed list of all the games that we discuss in each episode. Of course, we're also on iTunes. Subscribe. Give it as a gift. A Valentine's gift, if you will. Or or wait until the day after Valentine's Day and get the podcast like 75% off. Mm -hmm. Which is what I do. 75% off free. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) So with that, uh, we'll be back. All right, we're back. It was a lovely break. Uh, I missed you dearly. I don't want to spend any more time away from you guys as I have to, so thank you for joining us. I put rose petals on the bed, Mm -hmm. lit like 70 candles, which is just a huge fire hazard, but I'm told it's romantic. Yeah, I put on R. Kelly's Greatest Hits. Ew. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's not all piss and games with him. (laughs) So dating sims. I'm not really that familiar with them, uh, the origins of them. I don't even know. What Do we have any examples of what would be considered like the first dating sim? Where do they come from? Uh, weirdly, the earliest dating sim that I've been able to find is Softporn Adventures, mm. uh, an old Sierra game that we talked about in the first episode of the podcast. Of course, yeah. Uh, is that the one with the in the it, hot it's, tub? It's the woman who worked for the company yeah. in a hot tub and then a waiter who they actually hired <laughs> to be in the picture. Yeah. But uh, I've played a little soft porn adventures because you can do so for free online mm-hmm. on uh, the website of the guy who created the game. Oh, okay. And uh, it plays a lot more like a traditional adventure game. It's just that the puzzle solving is leading to you hooking up with ladies. And it's uh, text-based? Yeah, it's entirely mm. text-based. No, so nothing but words that mm. you have like fake graffiti that's set up to look like it's stuff written on bathroom walls but it's still all words it's just sort of ACII art peculiar but uh of course there are dating board games since at least the 60s really the earliest example i'm aware of is mystery date which was released in 1965 and has been remade mm, many times since then. i had that's... mystery date when i was a kid yeah. chris <laughs> evans is in it <laughs> He's one of the guys you can date. His name is Tyler in the game. He was in the 90s version, which is the one that I had growing up. That's okay, yeah. Mystery Date is great, and you might even uh, remember it from a Simpsons episode, where it turned out the Poindexter date looked exactly like Milhouse. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay, Uh, I finally have useless pop trivia. I had one called Dream Phone. I I love Dream Phone. (laughs) It was basically, they gave you one of those 80s giant cell phones, Mm -hmm. and then you dialed numbers of guys and then they'd say things to you and it was always the same voice no matter who the guy was and it drove me crazy Mm. that they only had one voice actor but I would just like take the phone and play with it because I was a little kid and I wanted to play with a fake pink 80s cell phone (laughs) but you dial the numbers and you just randomly hear you're right I really like you (laughs) (laughs) and like so you know it wasn't really that different from the phones you'd get Mm -hmm. at supermarket Mm -hmm. checkout lines (laughs) except it was giant pink. Was there just like a lot of awkward silence because you guys don't know how to really express your emotions at that age? (laughs) I mean, I wasn't having a conversation. It was just my phone telling me Mm -hmm. that it liked me. Mm -hmm. I I would have conversations with that voice. Yeah. They were some of the best conversations I had growing up. Wow. Yeah, so I mean, there were a lot of games like that in the West, certainly.
recently, mm -hmm. uh, well before even Soft Porn Adventures. But uh, weirdly, they didn't show up in Japan until about 1984 with the release of the game Girls Garden. Hmm. You play as a girl and you have to gather flower bouquets uh, and get the right kind of bouquets to impress the guys. Mm -hmm. Sort of like flower arranging. Sort of like flower arranging, yeah. yeah. And it's all timed. What uh, was that on? On the SG-1000. Oh, good old SG-1000. <laughs> One of those computer consoles that Japan had that nowhere else had mm -hmm. that had like hundreds of numbers so you can't remember what the fuck they were called. <laughs> Actually, the SG-1000 was a cartridge console. It was actually Sega's first home console. It was primarily released in Japan and Australia. I, I do find that interesting because I know the, at least in the internet circles where I run, uh, dating sims are kind of considered to be a Japanese thing. Yeah. Uh, which, it, that's, that's entertaining that really the West had them first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like a country that would have like the boyfriend pillow would just kind of like come up with dating sims first. Or first person anime. Or that first too. person anime. Yeah. Or, or anime was hot snake women. Mm -hmm. So once the Japanese get involved, where do we go from there? Dating sims are introduced here first, but none of them were really that successful. There was a Leisure Suit Larry series, mm -hmm. which was basically a remake of Soft Porn Adventures. But uh, that was really about it. But Japan didn't have a gaming crash like we had a gaming crash here. So in the early 80s, they were a lot more experimental mm. with games than we were when we were trying to convince people that it was okay to buy video game systems again. And mm -hmm. so there were a lot of visual novels released and a lot of dating sims and a lot of games that did stranger things that people just weren't willing to experiment with so, as much here. You'll see a lot more adult games if you look at pre-gaming crash games released in the U.S. than will you will post-gaming crash. Right. Not that all dating sims are adult games, but that is certainly a factor. But mm -hmm. uh, the biggest factor is probably the game Tokimeki Memorial, which wasn't released until 1994 and that was just a massive massive hit uh one of the biggest successes on the super nintendo in japan mm -hmm. super famicom and so with one game in this genre that was a huge hit that everybody played it was easy to justify releasing more games in that genre so they were hitting like mainstream consoles oh yeah tokimeka memorial was a super famicom game and you play as a student as a school <laughs> you play as a student as a school <laughs> you play as a student at a it's school complex. And uh, there are lots of girls at your school that like you. Mm -hmm. And so the interesting mechanic that this had is that if you totally ignore the girls you're not interested in and only talk to, like, one girl you like, is the other girls will get hurt and mad and, like, gossip to the other girls and tell them bad things about you. Oh, wow. And everybody will like you less. They call it love bomb. <laughs> yeah, and okay. so you have to sort of manage it where you're nice to all the girls, but then you pay more attention to the ones you like best so you don't hurt anybody's feelings mm -hmm. but you only go for one specific girl and they even had um, some matchmaking mechanics where you had male friends in the game and you could sort of push them towards the girl they liked oh, too when you gain more influence mm -hmm. it, it, it's a hugely popular series none of them have ever been released here but the anime based on it was released here uh, one of them, anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm not actually sure how many Tokimeki Memorial animes that mm -hmm. there are. But um, just because they had that massive mainstream in Japan hit, uh, dating sims became a lot more normal. Interesting. One thing I do find really interesting about dating sims as a genre uh, is uh, reputation as being for, like, pathetic, lonely guys who can't really get a date. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just wanted to point out that a lot of dating sims aren't uh, made with the male player in mind. Uh, Otome games, which translates to maiden games in Japan, are is a hugely popular genre, and their games made specifically for women. I play a lot of Otome games. No, and so. and I do. I play some as well, and so like I know it's a thing. But again, like there's this reputation. That it, and it, it might just be the circles I run in on the internet where that exists, and so I'm extrapolating, mm -hmm. and it, it like that reputation doesn't exist for most people. I mean, but, I, I like the impression I, I've always had is like dating sims were based more toward a female demographic. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't even 
for a while understand that dating sim was its own thing. I just thought they were all hentai games. In Japan, PC dating sims definitely tend to be adult games, or at least tended to be. There have been several companies like Key that included adult scenes in their dating sims on the PC and then released clean versions for consoles. And uh, once they became financially successful, they stopped putting adult content in their games at all. There's just an expectation that that be there in PC, and it's just not a thing on the console market really at all. But I would say that's less true now than it was in the 90s. Would you say those PC games were largely aimed at a male demographic then? They're boys love games, which are dating sims where all the characters are male that are aimed at women, and some of those are pornographic as well. But uh, games where women romance men are very rarely have any sort of adult content. So wait, these boys love games. That's like dudes banging dudes? Yeah, they're, ma- they're made for women who are referred to as fujoshi, which literally translates to rotten girl. <laughs> there are women who are into that in Japan, and so that's a market who will get adult games made for them. But Otome games very rarely have any sort of adult content, and... uh Tommy games were more likely to be on consoles in the 90s, but now you can find them on PC and mobile devices just as often. Uh, The like the Shall We Date series, which is really popular even in the US. Well, I want to ask because I'm trying to wrap my head around this, like dating sims. um, What kind of gameplay? Is it like a a set genre where you like a platformer, you know what you're going to get? This um, uh, Tokimeki Memorial, is that like a Pokemon looking game or is it? text-based it, it looks like uh i think aesthetically like an rpg mm-hmm. uh, so you walk around with your little sprites and you interact with other sprites when you talk to them a uh, picture pops up so you can mm-hmm. see what the character looks like but uh aesthetically there's definitely not one look and there can be a lot of variance mm-hmm. in terms of gameplay there are dating sims with almost no gameplay at all and just a few simple choices that you make and then there are dating sims with a uh, fairly complex gameplay on all kinds of gameplay even like puzzle games Mm -hmm. or dating sims that play more like adventure games and then all sorts of games that have dating sim mechanics within them even though they're entirely separate genre so really the one thing i would say that defines something as a dating sim is that the primary gameplay goal is to form relationships with other characters Mm -hmm. okay because it seems like now um that sort of has bled a little bit into mainstream gaming, especially RPGs yeah. in and general. Weirdly, Tokimeki Memorial is almost certainly responsible for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tokimeki Memorial was released in 1994. In 1996, two years later, you saw a huge surge of games that had light dating sim mechanics in them, like Harvest Moon, yeah. Azure Dreams, and Final Fantasy VII, which began development three months after the release of Tokimeki Memorial, also had light dating sim mechanics. So Get I think it. people we're, I don't yeah. Um, there's it, like it's like a hidden system in Final Fantasy VII. There's a, a date that you go on mm-hmm. with a character, and it's really easy to play it and not realize that you have any control. But there's an entire hidden system where based on your you start out with 50 points for Eris, 20 points for Tifa, and zero points for uh, Yuffie and Barrett. Mm-hmm. And then based on your actions, you get additional points for the character. We're saying certain things and can lose points. So if you learn the system, then you can manipulate feel like the characters in effect who you go on this one date with and i mean i think it's largely because this huge this game came out this was the first dating sim for a lot of people it was a huge success and they thought oh we have to put some of those mechanics in our new game yeah. and so you see a little of that in just so many games that were released in 1996 even fire emblem which is strongly associated with dating sim mechanics didn't introduce them to the series till wow. 1996 so you could go on a date with barrett you, you, you can't could. go on a date with barrett that's insane it's think- very hard to do it's the hardest one, yeah, I was but... completely oblivious to that. I think most people, because you start out with the most points with Eris, and mm-hmm. I think I think most players just went on the date with Eris, and I think people just probably didn't notice. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I wonder if you can go on a date with See, someone else. So entertainingly, love... the, the, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, entertainingly, the first time I played Final Fantasy VII, I had the date with Tifa. Mm-hmm. And, like, I didn't realize it was a thing that you could get someone else until, like, the third or fourth time I played Final Fantasy VII, that was the time I got Eris. 
Does it affect anything in the game? Uh, no, not Just that really. One date. There's little bits of dialogue mm-hmm. you might not see, but, but like very, Roth very minor. Kill Barrett. If you do get the date with Tifa, you get to see Tifa spin kick a dude in a dragon costume. So you know that's worth the price of admission. You don't get to go to the show if you go on the date with Barrett because they, when they come up to you and tell you that you're like the 100th customer and you mm-hmm. get to go in the show, they see you and they assume you're just two friends hanging out and they don't let you in. Oh yeah, bigots. Right. Yeah. I tell you. So you're mentioning a couple of games that start adding in dating sim mechanics, like Fire Emblem. What level of sort of interaction did you get in a game like that? Well, Fire Emblem always had character supports where you could talk to characters you spent a lot of time with and mm-hmm. get closer to them. In the 1996 game Geneal- <laughs> Genealogy of the Holy War, which sure. was the fourth game in the series, they uh, expanded that so that you could have characters get married and have children. Mm-hmm. So you you would basically treat it like a matchmaking game. You would figure out which characters were the most compatible or which would produce the most interesting child. Mm-hmm. And then you'd have them get married and then you'd encounter their child later on in the game. Because uh, I've heard mentioned primarily by you. That- <laughs> I do, I do like creating some mechanics. <laughs> that um, games like Fire Emblem sort of have basic core elements of the game are almost forsaken by a certain group of people, specifically just to play at the dating no, side. Uh, absolutely, which is bizarre because, I mean, you can spend hours playing one map on Fire Emblem. It is not a dating sim. It's a game with really strategic dating sim mechanics. Mm-hmm. Fire Emblem Awakening was one of the more recent Fire Emblem games, and it literally saved the Fire Emblem franchise. This is this tiny franchise franchise that hardly anyone played nintendo said this is going to be the last fire emblem so they went all out and tried some crazy things and it was a massive hit to date it sold over two million copies mostly in the west and mm-hmm. not in japan mm-hmm. and people loved the dating sim mechanics and so there are people who only want to play because they get really into shipping and hooking <laughs> characters up with each other. And so they keep introducing lower and lower difficulty levels because there are people who just want to rush through the maps as quickly hmm. as possible and only play the dating sim stuff. And I don't really understand it, even as a person who likes dating sims. Yeah. If I play a strategy RPG, I'm mostly playing it for the strategy RPG stuff. Yeah. And I'll just go play a dating sim if I really... I mean, how much of the game is dating sims? It would seem like it's like 5% of the game. Yeah, or... I mean, that's about fair. Yeah. I, I can explain it. It's the narrative. People are really enjoying the story behind this game. They're appreciating these the premise and the characters. Mm-hmm. And they want to like see how the story builds or build their own mental story around these characters that they like. Mm-hmm. It's the same reason you have all these shipping fan fictions. Mm. You know, people like doing that. They should just create Fire Emblem After Dark. I mean, I would not be surprised at this point if they came out with a Fire Emblem dating sim. And see, I would play a Fire Emblem dating sim. I'm just not going to play a Fire Emblem game only for the dating sim Mm -hmm. mechanics. And and that's reason. Like, I'm not saying they're they're right or wrong. I'm just like, I get why some people are doing it. It's hard for me to relate Mm -hmm. to. But they do that as also also with Persona. Persona is another game that added dating sim mechanics uh, for Persona 3, which is actually the fourth game in the series. Mm -hmm. Because there are two Persona Persona 3 is the fourth game? Yeah, because Persona 2 is two games. Mm. So there's Persona 1, Persona 2, Part 1, Persona 2, Part 2, Persona 3. Mm. And they're part of the Shin Megami Tensei series, which is a much larger series. Mm -hmm. But uh, they introduced dating sim mechanics in Persona 3 and expanded them even further in Persona 4. And absolutely, people fell in love with it. The games became huge, huge hits when they were really tiny. It was a really tiny niche series before. People get super into it. Mm -hmm. But what I really like about Persona 3 and 4 is it's not just dating sim mechanics. It's relationship mechanics and you cannot date anybody and still enjoy the dating sim system because it can just be about becoming better friends with this person Mm -hmm. and you do like little thoughtful things like you cook them lunch and then bring it to school and if you're better at cooking then you make a tastier lunch and they're more excited about eating lunch with you that kind of makes me think of uh star ocean the second story so one of the things it did as a role-playing game is that it had uh private actions where whenever you got to a town, you could just go into the town as normal. Or you could push a button and the party would split up. And when the party split up, you could, like, find the other members of your party in town and go and talk to them. And amusingly also steal from them. And sometimes you got the best items in the game like that. (laughs) 
And they expanded that and added actual dating some mechanics in Star Ocean 3. So what you would, what would happen in these private actions is that sometimes, uh, you would get the option to like, engage in further conversation or go and do something with one of the party members Mm -hmm. just depending on stuff that had happened in the game like you know if you healed somebody often enough they kind of liked you and that wrote like raised up the friendship or whatever but and now the thing they also had romance and friendship uh and you could raise up either or both bars depending on what you did and at the end of the game there was you know the end of the story and then they kind of did a what happens to each of the characters uh and depending on uh romance and friendship levels Mm -hmm. different characters could get uh different endings where they were in a relationship or you know they were just friends who had gone off on adventure together and it even went a step further uh in which there were different endings depending on if one person's romance level was higher than the other person's Mm -hmm. Uh, which not everyone had every kind of ending i think but there was a lot of different ones just based on these private actions you know and and it was just fun to see what kind of interactions you could have with your party members. Mm-hmm. I will say that in the Harvest Moon games, I completely ignore the dating sim stuff. I usually well, do too. I get so focused, like hyper focused on like cleaning up my farm and growing yeah, crops. Right. Or so that's, that's all who I has any time for dating when you have to grow all that wheat? Yeah. You know your wife will help you with the farm work. And if you marry properly, she'll take care of the chickens for you because <laughs> she loves chickens. And uh, the, what they, the farm work that they do is dependent on their personality and interests. And if you marry certain girls, they won't do it or they'll mm. do a really sloppy job. But then other girls, if that's part of their personality, they'll get into it. And obviously you've seen it makes sense for a girl who loves chickens to get into taking <laughs> care of the chickens at your farm. Yeah. So after you get married, she'll be like, oh, I'll do that stuff. So it will save you work. Huh, I might need to play more Harvest Moon. <laughs> I don't even participate in like the villages even. I just like to grow stuff and sell it. There's a, a new a new Harvest moon game coming out called Stardew Valley, and it looks so good. And it's not going to have multiplayer at launch, but it will later on. And I'm so excited to play it with Josh. Hmm. Oh, it looks so much fun. Yeah, it looks amazing. For me, when I became aware of this dating sim quality of games um, in the Western developed sort of gaming community would be The Sims. Right, and I think that's absolutely one of the first games that mm-hmm. really pushed Western developers to start including those types of mechanics in mm-hmm. their games because The Sims was an insane success and one of the things that people loved is that you could have characters date each other and yeah. it's not super romantic yeah, options right. for The Sims. It is a very silly game. Yeah. In The Sims, I spent almost my entire time going on dates. Like, that's pretty much all I did in that game. Yeah. And it wasn't something I expected. Like, I didn't, I wasn't like, oh, I'm going to buy The Sims and go on all these dates. It was just like, <laughs> I'm going to buy The Sims since it's on sale and everyone seems to like it. Yeah. They had one expansion where you can go on vacations. And so I would, like, raise my friendship with, like, every character. And then I would take them one by one on these dates into, like, the mountains and, like, the ski lodge. And we'd, like, spend half the time in a hot tub. Like mm-hmm. making out and stuff. Mm-hmm. It doesn't doesn't matter. Like dudes, you know, women it doesn't matter. It was just like every character in that game I ended up sleeping with. Yeah. I think were they breathing? <laughs> yes, throw them in the pot. <laughs> <laughs> but my sim was always happy. Mm-hmm. It was like bright green, glowing gem over his head at all times. He was so happy. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> then it starts to blow up. You get games like Mass Effect and... Uh... And Bioware released Knights of the Old Republic, which mm-hmm. was a huge success and actually had fairly robust dating sim options, especially when you compare it to Mass Effect several years later. Yeah, where you, right. There are only three uh, options and only two of them would be available to your character. But uh, who was romanceable wasn't dependent on your gender. It was dependent on your behavior in game Mm -hmm. so if you were on light side you had different options than if you're on dark side and different options if you were more neutral Mm. i would say there were at least 10 different romanceable characters in the game if not more Mm -hmm. but even if you were on the light side you can kind of go out and get a little dark strange right (laughs) (laughs) i mean it would probably be pretty hard they they oh it'd be hard i'm sorry (laughs) (laughs) No, please get to do it. <laughs> but uh, absolutely, that I would credit that game with the popularity of dating sim mechanics mm-hmm. in Western RPGs in general. Mm-hmm. And then they kind of, yeah, go on to make 
um, Mass Effect, which sort of gets more and more, I guess... Um, My impression is that Mass Effect 2 is actually the most romance-heavy game of yeah. the series, but that might not be correct because you I could romance the third game. The same sex in that game, yeah. could you? Well, you could, you could romance the same sex in Mass Effect 1. Is too. that right? Okay. Yeah, there's a bisexual love interest. Oh, okay. So, uh, well, let me ask you, are there currently any Western developed, like, just specifically dating sim games? Absolutely, yeah. Um, it's really easy to make a dating sim, even if you don't have a lot of program knowledge. I actually know how to make a dating sim. And have I you don't really... made a dating sim? I've, I've messed around with stuff. Oh. I make, I've never made a complete <laughs> game. Yeah. But uh, there's an engine called Rimpy, which actually a lot of dating sims are made in. It's a very simple scripting language. Mm -hmm. Anybody could learn it. Mm -hmm. And so it's entirely designed to make visual novels and dating sims. And so there are a lot of Western developed games on Steam that use the Rimpy engine. And not all of them are dating sims. Oh, sure, novels. yeah. Like yeah. Long Live the Queen was made in the Rimpy engine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's primarily what people use. And so there are all sorts of games like that. They're primarily for PC and not for any other system. Though. Mm -hmm. So Skyrim I play a lot of, but, you know, a lot of the marriage candidates are boiled down to fetch quest. Mm -hmm. You know, fine tin fire salts, now this person who originally had a life and a job and a home is just gonna live in your house for the rest of eternity mm -hmm. and say, yes, dear, you must be back from some adventure. I always thought it was weird that you could marry Ayala the Huntress. Right? Like, why Why is she just gonna hang out in your house now? She's fucking Ayala the Huntress. Yeah. She's like this super badass character and then she just becomes completely domesticated and it's right. so weird it really is you come back and she's like oh hi honey you <laughs> must have had fun on your adventure would mm -hmm. you like me to cook you some food and yeah, you're right like, no yeah. i want you to hunt shit right you are ayla the huntress <laughs> and you can like set up a business and make her be the uh no that's just what happens by default when you marry someone they they set up uh they like now offer a store yeah it's weird it, it is so it, like and again, I, I get that Skyrim is lacking in a lot of different, like, robust character elements. Mm -hmm. But even in what it has, like, you know, like Josh just said, these characters had a personality as such as it was. And now that's completely gone. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like, like Saints Row 4, uh, did a really great job of parodying this. Uh, when, you know, you finally woke up and found whatever member of your gang, you could just walk up to them on the ship and press square and, you know, then they fuck, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, that's that's entertaining to me that they just went, you know what, here, there's your dating mechanics. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, some of the most annoying dating mechanics I've experienced were in the Grand Theft Auto games. Yeah. It's like, give me a break. Uh, San Andreas, there was one girl she wanted to dance all the time. I can't remember the, the song. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Hollywood, Hollywood swinging. It's like a, a, a DDR kind of button timing event. And you had to go dance with her for like 40 or 50 times. It was so frustrating and so annoying. They did a much better job in uh, Bully. I don't recall. Yeah, you could you could date boys. Oh and girls. yeah, you could give flowers and chop yeah. and kiss and yeah, yeah. That's it, right. it was very innocent. It was, yeah, but it was very charming and I liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I guess we probably don't have any hard, concrete statistics, but I mean, would you say dating sims are geared more towards women or men? I wouldn't want to make a commentary on that mm -hmm. without numbers. I mean, or are there certain types, I guess, maybe that... Well, there are different genres, but I think in terms of games with dating sim elements, most games try to give options, mm -hmm. uh, a variety of options to the player. Mm -hmm. I'm not willing to make any commentary without numbers, on sure. which is sure. more popular. Okay. Now, looking uh, ahead, the future of dating sims. What are we talking about? Are we talking about VR here? I mean, I think we're going to see a lot more weird dating sims. Mm -hmm. uh, Had a Full Boyfriend has been super successful. That's a great game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to me, like, I've played Had a Full Boyfriend, and it's just this kind of normal dating sim. Well, you've played, you haven't played it very much. That's you true. would not think it's a normal dating well, sim if I, you played it. The, the more you get into it, there's a Hattiful lot of. Half a boyfriend is frog fractions. To give you an idea. There, there's, there's a lot of bizarre <laughs> shit in there. Like it's a dating sim that when the guys are pigeons, whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, it does act, however, give this background of this really interesting setting with like cyberpunk sci-fi elements and like a god of pudding or something. Yeah, and, it's Okasan. Yeah, right. And so like, but you don't 
really interact with most of that because you're busy trying to romance these pigeons. Mm -hmm. To me, that's the weird part of the game, well, but nobody talks about it. That's not true, though, because you do interact with it the, when you play the entire game. I've 100%ed had yeah, a whole boyfriend enough. in Bad Boys Love. I, bad they're, they're, love. Even, they're even battling mechanics. If I, you play which I know about that one, into... de depending on the... and like So I'm sure that if you make the right choices, you interact with certain parts of it more. For the record, since I assume most people listening to not know what Hadiful Boyfriend is. Hadiful Boyfriend has you playing as the only human student at the world's most prestigious school for pigeons. Uh, you exist in a world where a variation of the bird flu wiped out almost the entire population when scientists were trying to introduce a new virus to kill off a large portion of the bird population so that they would stop spreading that virus. They accidentally made birds hyper intelligent, and so there's an ongoing military conflict between humans and birds. It's sort of at a peaceful situation mm -hmm. but your character's parents were ambassadors to the birds people and they were killed in a terrorist attack wow. against birds. And uh, she's <laughs> Julian's <based> face. <laughs> <laughs> the, the entire game started as an April Fool's joke that okay. the owner had a blog and she posted pigeon pictures all the time on her blog because she had a pet pigeon. Mm -hmm. And then so she said, I'm coming out with a pigeon dating sim like as a joke and made a little demo and people went nuts for it and <laughs> so it. she made it into a game and yeah. then the game was translated and released in the west and it was a huge hit and then digital devolver remade the game for pcs and mm -hmm. ps4 and that made it an even bigger hit it's insane because of the, the description of that game i mean it just sounds like some hardcore full-blown just action game you know, <laughs> right just birds like that's, and... <laughs> that's and that's what i'm talking like you hear people talk talk about it and everyone will say oh well it's this weird pigeon dating sim well, yeah. no that's not the interesting like, thing about it like there was a time when the bird flu got out of hand and scientists decided to kill off the bird population but they became smart it's like <laughs> right i mean it, like at least that's in the circles i run again yeah. i can't like i can't speak to people you who run in a really, lot of circles i do i do run in a lot walking. of i should just walk <laughs> straight no, but it, like th that's what people talk about in the circles I run, and like mm. that you're missing the interesting part. The other thing is, if you play it for an hour, which is all it'll take to beat a game, probably less than an hour to get a ending, then you won't see most of that stuff. You have to 100 percent the game to mm -hmm. see all the super weird stuff. Mm, uh, even if you crazy. play through it once, you start seeing hints of it. So you're a human having sex with birds. Well, there's no sex. Oh, okay. I that mean, you know of. <laughs> there's no on It's just holding hands sex. kind of dating. Not even that in some files. Uh, you talk about getting married, I guess, hmm. in some places. Better not throw a rice at that wedding. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very well-written game. They're, the person really went all out. Hmm. There's a dinosaur dating sim, too, but it's not as good as had a whole boyfriend. So dating sims. Cripes. Apparently, there's a wide variety that you can still get that are being currently released. I think going forward into the future, we're going to see some VR implementation and things are going to get well, a little... They're already working on some of that with Oculus Rift. You've already seen some, like, uh, interaction with... Mm -hmm. What's the anime girl's name? Uh, Hatsune Miku. Hatsune, yep. Hatsune Miku. Uh, and there's another one that I'm just blanking on the name of. But, like, you're at a beach resort with your bikini-clad girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And you can interact with her. Oh, yeah. There's, there's Summer Session, which is actually confirmed to be released here. That's mm -hmm. a virtual reality game where you play as a private tutor to two teenage girls. That one is one Japanese and one is American. I mean, it's not a dating sim from what I can see. What is it? If anything, it seems more like a language learning tool that uses attractive teenage girls as a motivator mm. and that you're turning, you're teaching Japanese to the American girl and English to the Japanese girl. That actually sounds but, pretty uh, cool. It does sound pretty cool. I mean, it looks very good visually. Mm -hmm. The graphics are great. Yeah. And I'm not even saying the girls are attractive. I mean... Because they're not. Well, <laughs> that, it's just no commentary on the attractiveness of the girls. Just a lot of those games are stylized in a way that looks weird. And it looks real enough without hitting weird uncanny valley. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's part of the reason people have responded so strongly to that. And it's actually coming out here, which is kind of bizarre. Mm -hmm. since the girl, Especially because the girls are 16. Well, now, obviously, we can't talk about dating sims without mentioning the mother of all dating sims the witcher 3 <laughs> 
No, I, I think we could have talked about dating no, sims I'm without talking can't. about The Witcher 3. No. The Witcher 3 is interesting in that you actually can really deal with the fallout of breaking somebody's heart mm -hmm. in that game, and that's not a thing in a lot of games with light dating sim mechanics. Yeah, traditionally, you try to date, you get to a certain level where she's like, yay, and maybe you get like a you know boost to your health or some weird awkward sex scene or something, but that's pretty much where it ends. I'm pretty sure I slept with every possible <laughs> option in The Witcher 3. Yeah. And I mean... Main characters or are we talking about brothels too? Well, both. Oh, and there's, there's boy. Like, there's, there's a whole scene where you... you Subway. Um, I think it's a Gwent tournament, maybe. Yeah. And there's a there's a girl yeah. that comes in and yeah. is like, "Hey, Geralt, like, let's, <laughs> let's bone. team up. Let's <laughs> let's like rip these people off." <laughs> yep. And so you pull off this scam, and then you go and bone. But I, <laughs> I actually did not side with her. Oh, I totally did. Yeah. <laughs> In The Witcher, which one? Like, I was romancing one of the, the women, and it, you were sitting there the whole time being like, man, Josh is fucking That was Yennefer. <laughs> when, you, for, when you meet up with Yennefer again at that banquet. Is that when you have sex on a unicorn? It's before <laughs> you had sex on a unicorn. Mm. And, I just, like, Josh I, is, like, talking about, like, I'm just honored to be in the presence of such people. Oh, I did that one, like, oh, too. Oh, yeah. you're killing it, Josh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mandy was yeah. super impressed. Yennefer she's is like, my man. preferred lady. What was the name of the redhead woman? Oh, uh, Tris. Tris. Yeah, I tried to hook up with her at the masquerade ball. You you didn't hook up with Tris either, did you? No, I hooked up with Tris. Oh, I thought Absolutely. you missed out on hooking up with Tris. Absolutely. I tried to at the masquerade ball. I got a kiss and she's like, I can't do this. <laughs> No, I thought... Actually, no, you might be right. I might I have missed... I thought she left on the boat before... She did leave on the boat. I thought Trish was the only girl you missed out on. I mean, you, you banged a lot of redheads at brothels, <laughs> but well, I don't yeah, think that's you true. banged That's Tris. why you go to a brothel, really. <laughs> For the redheads? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, I was playing uh, Far Cry 4, and I had just finished the mission where you're in the arena, and you come out, and there's that woman that you talk to to sign up for fighting, and she's basically topless. She just has a little paint on her breasts. And so she's like, hey, AJ, and I just kind of like turned the camera to look at her, and I just happened to sort of be looking at her breasts, and at the bottom of the screen, it says, hold square to interact. <laughs> Point. That's how you talk to people in the game. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. No, I, I get that. <laughs> the first time you go in the arena, you're like naked. And you're butt naked, you're yeah. And if you like look down real quick, there's a there's some dangle in there. Yeah, he, when you wake up, I think you see it. just a little bit of that dang going on. Oh, good. Good for that game. Mm -hmm. What were the, the dating bars and the Yakuza? The hostess clubs? Hostess clubs, I yeah. love the hostess clubs yeah. because it's so much fun to try and figure out stuff with the girls in Yakuza 4. Mm -hmm. There was a girl who asked me to if I could recognize what region of Japan her accent was from, and I could, and she was so <laughs> impressed with me. And I'm like, I'm, I'm that much of a weeb. I'm yeah. so proud of myself right now. <laughs> it's because she had a Kansai accent, and if you watch a lot of anime, it's a really easy accent to pick up on. Hmm. But I felt cool yeah. for being a loser. Yeah, I always felt a little dirty when I'd go to the massage parlor. Uh, see, I, I, I just get really into the hostess clubs. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's one hostess club thing that Josh and Yakuza 5 that was super funny. The pajama thing where you ask her what she wears in bed at night and she's telling you oversized pajamas. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And he's like, ooh, oversized pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> like, he was just, she was trying to give these really innocent responses, and Josh kept trying to make it as creepy as possible. It was so funny. She, she got pretty upset at you. But uh, no, it, it was great though because she kept he kept trying to ask these questions, and then Josh kept finding the way to make it weird every time. <laughs> so, Mandy, has there ever been a Sonic the Hedgehog dating sim? Yes, Sonic dating sim RPG. That that doesn't surprise me. It's there's also Sonic Inflation Adventure, which is eighteen and older. Oh, I was going to say, I was like a game about economics. <laughs> Sonic Sim Date. Macro Sonic Dating Sim. I was going to make a bad joke, but I decided so, not to. But uh, actually, Girls Garden, the first Japanese dating sim, which we mentioned earlier in the podcast, was developed by the creator of Sonic the Hedgehog. So in a way, so, Girls Garden was the first Sonic the Hedgehog dating sim. <laughs> so where Sonic should have gone. <laughs> All right. So... You know, dating sims have been around for quite some time and have slowly sort of found their way into more mainstream games and are now pretty much just pervasive. Whether you're, you know, banging chicks in God of War or buying donuts in Grand Theft Auto V or... Uh... <laughs> Look, 
dating sims. All right. I, I didn't know nearly any of this until we just started talking about it. And now I'm a little bit interested in going back. I mean, I've played Girlfriend Construction Set and uh, had a good time with that. I kind of want to play a Had a Full Boyfriend now. I like, I like the option to sort of explore relationships and, uh, you know, hook up or whatever in games. It's kind of fun. It's kind of funny. Sometimes it's ridiculous. Sometimes it's just handled poorly. But I like the option to do it or not to do it. If you're into it a little bit more, you can get a game and just dive headfirst into it. Uh, really become a dating sim uh, master. So hopefully you've learned, you've loved, you'll go on to love and learn and love some more. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Half Glass Gaming, keep love in your heart and always wear a condom. Like, if you liked Harvest Moon at all, this is like Harvest Moon on crack. It like, looks so good. I like that it being on crack is a positive thing. <laughs> I mean, Well, have they... you ever been on crack? I think you'd understand. <laughs> Wait, you're black. You have been. Yeah, I'm, right. <laughs> I'm on crack now. All right. <laughs> there it is. My most racist joke ever. <laughs> he covered his mouth and sort of made a gesture to sort of – it's like winking, but you can't see that. <laughs> right. Unfortunately. He made a gesture that said – Edit point. <laughs> <laughs>